Okay, Brad, I just hit record because we've been talking for 30 minutes over some morning tea, coffee, I'm tea. And uh, we just talked about a lot of ideas and things that we've been telling our clients day in and day out for months, but particularly since we came back from the holidays. So we're, we're now, our challenge to each other was to distill that 30 minute conversation into three minutes and bring forward the best ideas about what we should do. So here's our morning game, Brad, start the clock now. We've got three minutes. Got three minutes on the clock starting now. Okay, you go first. Okay, uh, rethink your digital communication uh, frequency and segmentation. Be more thoughtful, put more space uh, between there to deliver uh, quality, perhaps a little bit over quantity. Okay, wait, building on that, part of the reason why segmentation is so critical is so that we can understand who's engaging. So we've got to be able to track back our digital and email communications to know if donors are loving this, high level donors, if this is first time subscribers, who cares about what we're doing so that we can tailor it. All right. So yeah, emails, email is easy to do that with, but uh, maybe some of you out there are going to be brave and bold enough to do the hard, dirty work of getting into your social media channels and understanding who's really engaging in your social media channels, yeah. understanding if the messages you're putting on social media are actually connecting and resonating with the audiences you think they are or who you are intending to reach there. Your turn. Yeah, do that. Someone's got to be bold and get in there and do it. It's hard work, but man, there's so much to learn from what we've got. Okay, we also talked about skill sharing between marketing and development teams. Development just came off of a big year-end campaign. Marketing is likely not launching a big sales something right now. So how can we use this time to do skill sharing? And where I see the greatest benefit here is in developing a stewardship plan for non-donor segments, for the whole rest of the database. How do we start bringing those really successful one-to-one -one relationship management tactics from development into a one-to-many strategy? So there's cool stuff. Yeah. yeah, I love that. I love that. I love that a lot. It makes me think about the other thing we talked about as well, which is listening along this way, right? How are we listening to our segments and then responding and acting, right? Or this is, is this an opportunity for us to be doing surveys or focus groups with key segments. What can we learn about what they really need or want from us in their relationship with us? What are our assumptions about that relationship that we may have about our patrons, that we may think we hold a certain level of importance in their life? That may or may not be what our, what our perception is and how do we make sure we are meeting them, meeting them where they are? What can, we be, what can we be listening for as we're doing this stewardship work throughout the year? And we have to do it now, not just because it might improve some relationships or engagement in the next nine months, but really so that we can fundamentally work differently, smarter, better, more efficiently, more collaboratively when things reopen and we're selling like crazy and we're asking like crazy and we're seeing people all the time in person and, and life changes again. So this is the time to test and learn for it, right? So that we can build a new pattern of working and building relationships. Yeah, we've got to work. We have got to work differently. Our field is fundamentally yeah. changed. Our organizations are fundamentally changed. This is the time where we can start to lift up, jump in our hot air balloons, survey the landscape, and figure out how do we need to be different when we're able to do what's more familiar to us later on in the year. Um, oh. Whoa, even at Ooh. the end of a sentence. Ooh. Right it's on the like timer, it's sentence. like I'm a pro. Okay, <laughs> one quick question for you, Caitlin, before we go yeah. out. I want you to settle a bet for me. Oh, okay. How late into January is too late or beyond January to take down Christmas lights? Whoa. All right, well, I live in Pittsburgh and it's been sort of cold here. And so my outdoor ones are still up until I can go out without it being cold. Indoor ones need to be down by now. Yeah. So I give you to end of January for outdoor Christmas lights. You? Yeah. Okay. Agreed. No, I agree. That's the Great. right side of the bet. I'll, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to settle that with my significant other. Good. Thanks. Glad I could help. All right. We'll talk to you later. Brad. <laughs>